Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We are in 1 Timothy chapter 4. We'll be looking at verses 9 and 10 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, he says here in verse 9, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Now, this phrase, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, is referring back to verse 8. <clears throat> and verse 8, we saw last lesson that Paul here is dealing with the exercising and not, not physical exercise, but the exercising of that the Gnostics and ascetics did. And Paul is saying that if we truly do spiritual exercising, it will benefit us not only in this life, but also in the life to come in heaven. So he's not talking in verse 8 about physical exercise, going to the gym, although we should do that because we have a physical body and that body needs to needs to be active in order to stay in shape and uh in order because uh, if we don't it just gets uh, things things go wrong with our physical body when we don't take care of it and therefore same also with our spirit when we when we do spiritual exercise, uh, we draw close to God and it benefits us, as he says here, but godliness is profitable unto all things. So what does, what does godliness, when we, when we set our, when we set our minds and our hearts on obeying the word of God and, and, and being true to prayer and loving him, what does it do? It has a promise of the life that now is. It blesses us in this life, and it also blesses us in the life to come. Now, verse 9 says, this, meaning what he says in verse 8, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. It means that we need to take verse 8 to heart, and we need to... Uh, we need to uh, see the importance of spiritual exercise, spiritual uh, being uh, being focused on living a godly life and honoring the word of God and, and the truths of the word of God. So verse 9 points back to verse 8. It does not point forward to verse 10. Now, we start here with verse 10, and it says, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Now, he says here in verse 10, For therefore, and the Greek for this phrase, for therefore, means because of what was just said. It also means because of the fact. So because godliness, because godliness is profitable in all things, things in earth and things in heaven, then we labor and suffer reproach. It would be like, <laughs> it would be like your boss coming to you and saying to you, um, I'm going to give you a $2 an hour raise uh, three months from now. If you work hard and you're honest and true for the next three months, then at the end of that three months, I will give you a $2 an hour raise, right? So you work hard and you say, wow, $2 an hour raise, that's a lot. I'm, go I'm going to work hard and and, and I'm going to uh, focus my attention on my job and do the best that I can because I know that three months from now, 90 days from now, I'm going to get a $2 an hour raise, <laughs> right? So 
This is, this is what Paul is saying. That if we live a godly life here, if we live a godly life and we focus our attention on honoring God and his word and living, living unto God's truth, then at the end, there will be a blessing for us on this earth. We receive a blessing on the earth while we're here and also in the life to come in heaven. There's going to be a blessing in heaven. If we live godly now, then in the end, when we die, there'll be a blessing in heaven for us. It'll benefit us. Now, what is that? Who knows? <laughs> maybe it, maybe it increases our mansion, right? Maybe our mansion is a little bigger. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe somehow, some way, we're going to be blessed in heaven. It's going to increase our blessings in heaven. So he says here, for therefore, or because of, because of what, what he just said, we both labor. Now, labor here, the Greek word is kopaiao, kopaiao, and it means to work so hard that you are weary, you are exhausted. And then he says, labor and suffer reproach. Now, suffer reproach, the Greek word is agonizomai, agonizomai, and it's where we get our English word, agony. So, both these words, kopaiao and agonizomai, picture something that is painful and strenuous. So Paul says, for therefore, or because of, because of verse 8, what he said, for therefore, we both labor and suffer reproach. Now, why, why is it that we labor and suffer reproach? Why would you go through the agony and strenuous activity of, of laboring and suffering reproach? And the answer is the last part of this verse. For therefore, we labor and suffer reproach. Why? Because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. So we labor now, we, we agonize because we trust in the living God. Now trust here, the Greek word is elpizo, and it's in the perfect tense. Why is that important? Well, elpizo actually means to hope, to have a hope. So perfect tense means that it is a settled and finished hope. It mean it doesn't mean that I'm if it was present tense it means I'm hoping and continuing to hope. All right? But perfect tense means that my hope is finished, it's settled. It, it's fixed right on the Lord. I don't need any more hoping. I I I I mean doesn't mean you don't need any more hoping, but what I mean is is that it's complete. Uh, so our hope is complete and it needs nothing more. I don't need more, more verification to make me hope more. No. My hope is settled and it's finished. It's complete. I have a completed hope. So therefore we labor, we work hard and we suffer reproach because we have a tremendous settled hope in what? In the living God. And it says here, who is the Savior of all men. Now, this phrase is not teaching universal salvation. That's what it sounds like, but it's not. It's not teaching universal salvation that God is the Savior of everyone. The Greek word for Savior is soter, soter. And this Greek word, soter, can also mean deliverer or preserver. God is preserving mankind in that he provides rain, sun, food, and weather, right? So when it says that God is the savior of all men, it doesn't mean that he's, doesn't mean eternal salvation, 
It, can, it means preserver of life here on earth and provider of life. Provides food and rain and sun and, 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 and things, uh, air for us to breathe. He provides the things that we need. He's the provider of for all men. If God truly saved everyone, then what would be the need for us to believe? If God saved everyone, we wouldn't need to believe in Jesus. Why? I'm already saved. No. The fact that we need to believe in Christ to be saved nullifies the idea that God has already saved mankind. So he says here that uh, who God, who is the Savior or the, the provider for all men, especially of those that believe. Now, verse 11, he says, these things command and teach. Paul is re-emphasizing what he said back in verse 6 to put the brethren in remembrance. He says here in verse thing, if you put the brethren in remembrance of these things, Paul here again re-emphasizes to Timothy to teach to to for Timothy to to command these things and let these bishops and and pastors and uh, to know the truth and to go forward in the truth. Both words. Command and teach, in verse 11, are in the imperative mood and in the present tense. Meaning that it is vital, it is imperative mood means it is imperative, it is vital that Timothy continuously command and teach these things. And Paul has stated, uh, Paul has stated in the first 10 verses that to the pastors and bishops around Ephesus. So Paul here tells Timothy these things, command them and teach them. The first 10 verses of, of this chapter, command these bishops and, and leaders in these home churches around Ephesus, teach these things. Timothy, make sure these pastors and bishops know these things, teach them to them. And make sure they, they understand them. And do it. It's imperative that you do it. Present tense means you do it now. Continuously. Over and over again. Keep these things before these local pastors as you do them. All right. We'll get into verse 12 next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.